Welcome to the Mind Your Business Show. I'm your private money godfather, Tony Calloway, and today's topic is something that I know you'll be interested in. So go grab your pen and paper, and when we come back, we'll be talking about how you, yes you, how you can play and win the consumer credit game. Welcome back to the Mind Your Business Show. I'm your host, Tony Calloway, your private money godfather. And today's topic is how you can play and win the consumer credit game. We all know that credit is part of life nowadays, and it seems to be a mystery to so many people. And some people have great credit scores, don't know why. Some people have poor credit scores, can't figure out why. So today I'm going to totally demystify this topic so that you can play this game because it is a game, but we're going to show you how to win. What we're going to discuss today is factors that comprise your personal credit score, differences between FICO and Vantage scores, because there's this new uh, scoring arrangement out there that's confusing people, how lenders view your personal credit history, does credit repair really work, and is it worth it, and keys to maintaining a strong personal credit history. So now we use this word credit. We hear the word credit score, and people kind of use them synonymously, so I figured, you know, the teacher and me, we're going to start off with some definitions so that we'll understand the differences between the two. All right now, credit technically is a contractual agreement in which a borrower receives something of value immediately, in this case we're often talking about money, and agrees to pay for it later, usually with interest. So that is credit. All right, now credit score, however, is a numerical rating that measures a person's likelihood to repay a debt. So oftentimes when people say my credit, <laughs> they're actually talking about their credit score. And to the extent that your credit score is a big determining on whether and how much credit you can actually get, I think it's worth the time we just invested to make sure that you're clear on the terms there. Now there are several factors that comprise your personal credit score in this credit game that you're playing. And you'll notice that there are five categories. There's payment history, 35%. The amount owed, 30%, length of credit history, 15, new credit, 10%, and credit mix, 10%. Now, the thing that most people think about is the top line, the payment history, and that's what they think of their credit or their credit score. Okay, I'm going to use credit score because that's the correct term, but you notice that even though it's the biggest percentage, it's they're 65% more that goes into determining your credit score. So it's great if you're paying all of your obligations on time, but there are several things that might be impacting your credit score. Or maybe on the other side of, of the equation, you've been managing those other 65% and maybe you're hitting and missing a little bit, you know what I'm talking about, on making those payments. But it could be remedied by understanding the weighting, the balancing, and how all these things interplay with each other. So I'll be covering all that and you'll understand it better. Now, another thing, again, besides those five factors that are confusing people, is there's this thing called a Vantage score that's popped up. And we use this term FICO. And FICO is actually an acronym. And it stands for Fair Isaacs Corporation. And the Vantage score solutions, between the two, they're two competing companies. So they're now in the game together, giving out scores. And people may see one or the other and, and wonder why one's different than the other. Well, again, we're going to address all that. And each person creates, each one of those, excuse me, creates and sales credit scores to lenders and other businesses. So this whole ecosystem of credit rating, credit scoring, is where the lenders want to know each and every individual's propensity to make repayment on the debts and obligations, or maybe they're measuring the risk whether or not to extend credit. Well, FICO is the one that's been around forever, but also the Vantage score is a new one. And so it's important to understand that these companies, these two companies, FICO and Vantage, are servicing lenders and folks who are out there in the business of loaning money. So their value proposition to those lenders who actually pay to get that information about you and your credit profile is that they can make better business decisions 
in as much as they want to loan money to people who will pay it back and obviously don't want to loan people to whose history don't indicate they paid it back and make adjustments and modifications to how much what the rates are going to be and all that for everybody in between. All right, so we've got some of the basics understood. So now let's talk about Vantage specifically. Now, it was founded by the three credit bureaus. Now, the credit bureaus are Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, and it's relatively new, 2006, relative to the fact that FICO has been around forever, and that the FICO and Vantage business models assign different weightings to the items they find on your credit history. And the reason I'm bringing Vantage up is because on some of the uh, free credit uh, monitoring programs, they give you a Vantage score. And it often looks better than what you may have seen on your FICO score. That's because their rating and, uh, and weighting platforms are very different. Another difference between the two is that you don't, it just understands you don't have just one score. You have a lot of them. And how, how is that possible? Well, there are actually hundreds of different credit scores that lenders may use to evaluate you, and thousands if you count the custom maintenance. But now the fact is that 9% of lenders use FICO to evaluate uh, their borrowers. And this point I'll go ahead and make is that whatever is on your credit report, good or bad, and of course is, is, is um, always changing, is on there for seven years. So if you've got something that, you know, a late payment or a collection or something like that, it's going to take a while for it to fall off. Now, we're going to talk about credit restoration and credit repair a little bit later. So there might be some things that will be able to be removed. But just in the normal course of things, we have a seven-year clock that is determining the length of time that information will be on your credit report. And here you are looking at, and I hope you can see it, there's a chart. Now, now, here you see the, that there's a chart with the FICO and the Vantage scores. And the key thing, if you're able to see this in detail, because you might be seeing it on YouTube or you might be seeing it on television, is that the bands are different, but each one of those goes from 300 as a minimum up to 850 at the top. Now, whether you're in the medium, the good, the bad, or the great, the difference in scores is confusing. So the most important thing for you to understand is that you want to have a strong credit score, no matter which one of these programs or which one of these platforms is measuring you. And uh, just understand that there's a difference in the bands and how they look at your credit in making those determinations. And as always, you know, your private money godfather is here to help you to power your dreams with private money. So in addition to you learning how to play and win the credit game, when it comes down to having dreams of investing in real estate, starting a business, it's going to take money. So contact us at privatemoneysyndicate.com or you can give us a call at 706-888-3719. All right, here we go. How lenders view your personal credit history. All right, now your score is one thing. Now your score, if you think back, is those five factors that go into creating a number. Now, that number is what most people consider their credit, their credit score. However, there's another important part that goes into developing your credit score, and that is your credit history. So as I say here, your credit history is a whole nother matter. So now when you combine your score and your history, that creates a credit profile. All right. So to the extent that we talked about making the payments, we talked about how much you owe. We were saying that one of the other factors is uh, the new credit that you have and there are various other factors, it's important to realize that those things are those items that stay on your credit report for seven years unless you do something to have them removed. But those, based on that weighting, whether we're talking about FICO or Vantage, are calculated to give you the number. So here's, a, here's an important point. Some people say, well, I got a 700 credit score, but I got the client for a loan. That's because when they looked at their history, they saw that you had a bankruptcy. All right. And again, it's really confusing, but you have to understand that not only do they look at the history, but they also look at the score that is a result of the history. Some people might have a low credit score because there's something deficient in their credit history. That was the case for me because you typically have to have certain numbers of lines of credit. And a big mistake that I made, that I'll talk about a little bit more. I paid off credit cards and then I closed the accounts. Big mistake. But that brought my score down, even though it showed a better history because I didn't know anybody, all right? So just understand that these things are very important. When people are looking at you to make some credit decisions, all right, so now here's another important thing that can be confusing. Different lenders look at your credit score and your credit history differently. And as it says here, that different lenders focus on the most pertinent payment history. 
the most pertinent payment history. So, for example, if you're going to buy a home, then a mortgage lender is going to look at how did you pay your house note. Makes sense to me, okay? If you're going to buy a car, an auto lender is going to see how have you made your car payments. A credit card issuer is going to look at, you know, how you made the payments on the credit card. And if you're getting a term loan from a bank, they want to see your repayment history. It's not that they're going to be blind to all the other stuff, but again, they're going to look at how you value the relationship that related to the types of loans that they make, and that will have some impact. You remember I said a few minutes ago, you might have hundreds of credit scores. Well, they have their own rating that they'll calculate as it relates to you and the type of lending that they do. Now, let's talk about inquiries for a moment. You know, everybody hears this thing, you don't want a bunch of inquiries on your credit report. Well, now, it's a catch-22 as it says that, you know, applying for new lines of credit can negatively affect your credit score. It certainly can. But it says applying for multiple lines in order to compare rates makes sense. Now, there are different platforms. I'm sure you've seen apps and things online where you can get different comparisons all in one shot. And they say it doesn't impact your credit score. So, again, I'll ask you or encourage you to explore those on your own. But now the key thing is that you really do not want to have a bunch of inquiries on your credit report, but it is important for you to get the information. So do it the smart way. I want to tell you the not smart way. Okay, let's just call it dumb way. All right. You ever heard this, this concept called going to shoot the woods and see if I hit something? <laughs> now, one of the advantages of working with money brokers when it comes to things that we deal with in terms of people getting money for businesses and real estate is if you go to an individual bank or go online and apply to an individual entity for a loan, if they do or do not approve you, you know, you, you don't know what their alternatives are. So in order to see an alternative, you go to another institution. Or maybe you got approved, but you didn't like the rate, so you want to go apply somewhere else. Well, these things are particularly impactful and oftentimes negatively on your credit score. So my encouragement to you is find opportunities where you can get bulk information or in the case of working with money brokers like myself, we're able to go out here and get information and bring it back to you so that we'll have the data up front. Now, again, looking at how lenders look at your credit score as a point of inquiry, is that there's a newer FICO version, and depending on when you view this now or sometime down the road, they might have added another one, but the most current ones uh, count multiple credit inquiries as of the same type within 45 days as a single inquiry. So if you're out car shopping and you've gone to 10 dealerships and they've all, you know, the first thing they want to do is get your driver's license and stuff, yeah, they, they bet they're running your credit, all right? So, but, you know, if that's what the lenders see within a 45-day period, according to the newer FICO version, that's just one inquiry. And one's really not going to hurt you. And as far as Vantage is concerned, multiple inquiries, even for different types, cars, credit cards, homes, all of that within 14 days, two weeks, they count that as a single inquiry. So again, we're talking about how you can play and win the consumer credit game. So these are rules. And I always say that the rules define the game. So understanding these things, you can't control whether the lender's looking at FICO or they're looking at Vantage or anything like that, but you can control your behavior in terms of understanding how these particular things that relate to inquiries and, and the other things I've talked about as well have an impact on your credit score. Now let's talk about some of the other things that most people don't know about their credit history that can impact their life in other ways. Did you know that your credit profile can affect, yeah, we know it affects whether or not I can get a loan or it can affect the interest rates, but did you know that your credit score, your credit history impacts your auto and home insurance rates? Most people don't know that because, again, these, these issuers are evaluating risk. So now somebody who has a higher risk based on their management of payments because, you know, they say that, you know, one way to get rid of, if you got car insurance, think about this, you got car insurance, you're having a hard time paying it, somehow or another your, your car winds up in the Chattahoochee, <laughs> okay, well then the insurer's got to pay that off, I, you know, that's probably far-fetched, but you get my point, what if the house burns down, well, you know, then the mortgage company has to be paid off by the insurance company, so there, you know, this might seem extreme, but I encourage you to do this, once you get your credit score up, now I'm not talking about shopping from one lender, excuse me, for one insurer to the other, but go back to your same insurance company and say, hey, look, my credit score has gone up from 600 to 750. 
I would like to be re-quoted for my car insurance. I like to be re-quoted for my homeowner's insurance. I guarantee you that you're going to see a reduction in your rates if you had a low, poor credit score. You know, all things being equal now, if you had a wreck or something or had a speed ticket. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if everything else is the same, but you improve your credit score, you're going to see lower rates for your home and your auto insurance. In some states, and Georgia being one of those, and potentially any employer that's, uh, I think, going to be paying more than $25,000 a year, they can pull your credit and use that as a determining factor of whether or not they want to hire you or not. And again, they're looking at this as risk. If someone's financial life seems to be in shambles, then you know, they might be more likely to uh, uh, commit fraud, theft, or any of these other things. So yes, there are other evaluations that are made of you based on your credit score. And if you're in the military or work for the government and you're going to be working with classified information, when they do that background check, they're going to do a credit check. And if you ain't got a credit score, you ain't going to get a security clearance. All right. So these are things that go well beyond just the financial impact of your credit score on your life. So the encouragement certainly is for you to do anything and everything for you to improve your credit. Yes, the private money syndicate is here. When you get your credit right, <laughs> well, we got an opportunity for you to power your dreams with private money. You know, this is true. I say this to people. I say it's a lot easier to get your credit score up to go get a loan for $100,000 than it is for you to save up $100,000. So to the extent that if you've got dreams of going into business or investing in real estate, then give us a call at 706-888-3719, or you can go to our website, privatemoneysyndicate.com. A lot of very informative information there, and you can schedule a consultation, and we'd be more than happy to discuss all these things with you, to include how you can play and win the consumer credit game. All right, credit repair, another big topic. Does it really work, and is it worth it? All right, now credit repair is the process. Here's a definition of removing inaccurate and derogatory information. That's one step, removing inaccurate and derogatory information, adding positive trade lines, along with making other adjustments to your credit profile. Now, so this is multidimensional in terms of things that we call, you know, credit repair, credit restoration. The bottom line is, how do we get our credit score up? Well, you know, from the standpoint that when it comes to credit repair, now there's a whole industry out there and it's, you know, sometimes people think of it highly, sometimes people poo-poo it. Hey, look, here's the facts. There is nothing a credit repair company can do that you can't do yourself. There's not a thing that they do that you can't do yourself. However, and this is a big caveat, and this is, this, this, this is how folks really are, they don't care about their credit until they really use it. <laughs> until they're ready to buy a house, until they're ready to buy a car, until they're ready to get that job, they know they got it. So when it comes down to, I'll say, panic mode, oftentimes using a credit repair agency is a benefit because they do this as a business. They have systems in place. They have processes in place. And I always tell people, whatever they charge, you know, the juice has got to be worth the squeeze, okay? If, if you're just aware of your poor credit score and you're understanding the things I'm talking about, then you can manage this process over time. It's going to typically take three to six months, but you may not be as rigorous about it. It might take you six to 12 months or it might take you 12 to 24 because it's a process that has to be executed upon. Credit repair agencies do this as a business and to the extent that time is money and you're trying to compress and shorten the time it takes to get your credit score up, I would certainly ask you to explore credit repair agencies for the benefit that they provide in that regard. Now, we have some that we work with. We'd be more than happy to share with you, but there are lots of them out there. So I always tell people, you know, you look at the menu, you pick your items, okay? But again, it's just as a matter of GP, general principle, if you do all the things we're discussing today, you can increase and improve your credit score. But if you need to get it done quick, fast, in a hurry, and I'll just give you an example. We have one of the partners who works with us. They can make bankruptcies disappear off your credit report temporarily <laughs> off that history. Again, the history. And it's going to come back. But if you need to get that out of view so that you can qualify for financing within a 60, 90 day window, they know how to make it happen. So, again, you're paying for a service and there are experts out there who can do that. But we want your expectations to be appropriate. And so with that being said, you decide if it's worth it. But certainly, I can tell you that many of them do work. 
Now, here are some of the things that you can do to quickly improve your credit score. Since we're talking about the actual process of repairing your credit, it says pay credit card balances strategically. Like sometimes people, okay, it's right now, not knowing when you're going to view this, it's first of the year, and people are looking forward to get those income tax refunds, right? And they're thinking all the smart things they're going to do when they get their refund. I want to pay off my cards. Well, if you don't have enough to pay off all your cards, don't pay one off and leave the other ones out. You need to get the balances down. Okay, so when it says strategically, you want to get those balances down to 30% or less to get the maximum benefit of that particular metric, your credit score that addresses, you know, how much you how much you owe. You also, in order to meet that 30% threshold, and this is something I did, ask for higher credit limits. So if you have a card with a thousand dollar limit and you owe five hundred dollars on it. Let's just say that you got it increased to fifteen hundred. Let's just say two thousand dollars. Then that same five hundred dollars is less than that. Five hundred is now twenty percent. Uh, no, excuse me, twenty five percent. Excuse me, math. Twenty five percent of the of the available credit. So you've just taken a measure, nothing done, didn't pay anything off. You just made the number fit within the box that the lenders are looking for. So ask for those higher credit limits, and if you can be awarded those, that can definitely help to boost your credit score by getting your balances below those thresholds, the maximum that you're gonna get for that stand between zero and 30%. Number three, pay your bills on time, all right? That's kind of going without saying, and sometimes we all screw up and mess up, and they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna put a mark on the board. All right, so be very mindful. Set up automatic recurring payments. Uh, get reminder texts from your most of the credit cards and lenders will give you emails or, or text reminders. So just, you know, be on top of that. And now another strategy, now there, there's got to be some cooperation here is become an authorized user. Now let's just say that uh, your, your parents, when your parents has a great credit score and yours sucks, okay? So if they make you an authorized user on one of their credit cards, then their credit, their credit profile for that particular card transfers for you. So let's just say they've got a card with a $5,000 limit and nothing on it, it's totally paid off. Well, if you become an authorized user, now they might not even give you the card, okay? But on the credit report, it shows that you're an authorized user, then that transfers on your credit profile and whammo, you just had a boost to your credit score. So understanding there is a risk to the other party. Now, if they give you that card, you go mess up y'all's credit now, uh, then it's not gonna do any good. And understand if they have you as an authorized user and they go out there and do something that's you know not gonna help your cause, then that's gonna impact you. So with this as a strategy, just understand that it can be beneficial, but it can have jeopardies associated with it, but used strategically, tactically, and smart is a fast way to get your credit score improved. Some more here, dispute credit report errors. Now they do make errors on a credit report, give you a case that applied to me. Um, they had me at an address in Villa Rica, Georgia. I've never, I've never been to Villa Rica, Georgia. <laughs> How that happened, I do not know, but we had to get that error removed. And again, that, you know, having wrong addresses, wrong phone numbers, uh, if you're a junior versus a senior, all those things, those do happen. And uh, to get those corrected certainly can bump up your credit score. Uh, deal with collection accounts. Now, here's some things before I even really got into these topics. Years ago, I counseled some people on how to do these things, let's just say that you've got a debt that was in default, okay? And of course you get collection agencies who will buy that debt and they'll try to collect on it. Now here's what you wanna do, don't ignore them because every time that debt gets sold to somebody else it pops back up on your credit report, even if seven years have gone by. Say, hey look, negotiate. Here's what you wanna do, negotiate. Let's say you owe $10,000. Say, hey look guys, I will pay you, let's say we can agree on six, okay, 6,000. I'll pay you back six thousand. But here are my conditions: I want you to post this on my credit report in my credit history as an active account, okay? So that I can build a credit history with this, and I want you to report my payments that I make on time. So, in other words, instead of this becoming remaining as a collection account, post it as an active account. They reduce the amount you owe by negotiation, so that it gets out of default, and you start actually using a collected account 
accountants in collection that actually start building your credit report, your credit history, I'm sorry, building your credit history and your credit score. So that's a strategy that you can use there. Using a secured credit card, that means that you put some money with the institution that you can borrow back from yourself. So let's say you put $1,000 on, on, on a secured card and you start staying under that 30%, which means you don't take more than 3,000 of it off, excuse me, 300 of it off that 1,000, then that is going to start reporting. And, of course, the lender has no risk. It's your money that you're borrowing, but you're playing the game. Okay, you're playing this credit score game. So that is something you can control and a tactic you can use. And then, as it says, there are platforms now that you can uh, use to get your rent and your utility payments reflected on your credit report, on your credit history. And of course, you know, if you like staying there, you like having lights and water, <laughs> you're going to pay those on time. But again, that payment history reflects on your credit profile and those things help you to rapidly improve your credit score. So these eight things I've just discussed are tactics and help you to move the needle in the right direction very quickly. Now, the last major topic is credit monitoring. Now, there are the free monitoring services and then there are the ones that you pay for. And this chart basically says in summation that they both are good. They're sourcing most of the same information, but the ones that you pay for source more information as well as they often give you some protections or greater protections like the million dollars uh, protection against identity theft versus the free ones which may offer a lesser amount or none whatsoever. But the most important thing is you need to monitor your credit. All right, now from the standpoint of what you need to be paying attention to, and uh, there are a lot of different ways to do it, there's any new accounts. Now, if you know you didn't open up a new account and a new account pops up, there's something wrong. All right, the other thing is you open up a new account and it might take a month or two to reflect, but if it doesn't show up and you're paying it on time, you want to make sure that gets added because some lenders, and again, in some states, the minimum loans or case in point, if you happen to go to some of these payday loan places, or pawn shops or anywhere that you might uh, be borrowing money at, uh, you know, some pretty exorbitant rates. If it's below a certain threshold, they don't report it to the credit bureaus because remember, companies have to pay to get that information on a credit bureau. However, if you default or you don't pay on time, guess what they're going to do? <laughs> they're going to put it on your credit report. So you don't get points for doing good stuff if you get the merits or you get, uh, you know, get, get, get penalized for, for not. So be very conscious of that. Uh, examine if you're doing the right things, how it impacts your credit score. Is your credit score increasing or is it decreasing? Uh, adjustments to your credit card balances. Now, let's talk about an authorized user thing. Let's just say you have a child that you have on one of your cards. And if you're not paying attention, you don't use a card, but you're, you, you've authorized them to use it and your name's on it too, they might be kind of, you know, enjoying themselves on the weekend, and it starts reflecting negatively on your credit score. Late payments, uh, new derogatory information popping up that may or may not be accurate, and then updates to your personal identity information. Like I told you, they had me at an address I have no clue. I don't even know where Villa Rica, Georgia is. All right, but the fact of the matter is you need to monitor all this stuff so that whether you're using a service or you're doing it on your own, it's important. So we're going to kind of wrap up here with the keys to maintaining strong personal credit. All right, I've touched on all these things, but I want to bring it all to some sense of closure because I want you to be able to play and win the consumer credit game. The first one is on your credit card, stay below 30% of your credit limits. All right, so even if you got a $10,000, a $1,000, or a $300 limit on your card, Stay below 30% to get your credit score up. Now, if you need to use the thing, use the thing, but understand how it impacts your credit. So strategically, you're seeking to improve your credit score. Stay below 30%. Do not close paid off credit cards. Now, I made this mistake because <laughs> I was mad at them. I can't remember where the money came from all of a sudden, but I went and paid off all my credit cards. I had a bunch of them, like seven or eight, and I closed them all just in spite, but that I mean, it torpedoed my dog on credit history. All right, so the key thing is pay them off. I tell people, hey, get a plastic bag, fill it with water, put them in the plastic bag, stick them in the freezer, and at least before you use them again, you got to think about it. <laughs> okay, but keep that history on there. All right, uh, you know, have savings for emergencies. Oftentimes, people use their 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 credit 
go get loans or use their credit cards because the car broke down or something. Now, Christmas should not be an emergency. It comes every year. All right, but the fact of the matter is start saving because the best way to get out of debt, the best way or one of the best ways to maintain a strong credit uh, history is to have cash that you can access from savings. And corollary to that is save for planned expenses. If you know you're going on vacation to Disney this coming summer, then start stacking some money away. When you get that income tax refund, you know, conserve some of that for that, that particular uh, good time away. But yeah, save for those planned expenses. And the last thing here is pull your credit report annually. Uh, in some states, you can pull it twice a year at annualcreditreport.com, but that's the official site uh, I'll say sanctioned by the government for everybody to be able to access their credit for free. So you can pull it free one or two times, depending on the state that you live in, to see what's there. And as I said, the monitoring of your credit is important. So if you decide to use some of those services, whether it's the free ones or the ones you pay a little bit for, to stay on top of it, you know, minute to minute, day by day, then I will just tell you, in the world we live in today where credit is so important, it's important to pay attention to it. Just like it's important to pay attention to what the needle or the, the reading of the fuel in your car is, you need to know where you are as far as your credit. Not just the money in the bank, but where your credit is because at some point, it might not be a financial thing. It might be an employment thing. You want to make sure that your credit history is going to reflect on you positively. Now, the Private Money Syndicate is here to power dreams. And again, it's a whole lot faster to get a million dollars because you got good credit to fund this real estate or this business idea than it is for you to save up a million. In fact, I tell people, if you got a 750 credit score, it's like having a combination to the vault, okay? But we want to help you to power your dream, so give us a call at 706-888-3719 or go to our website, privatemoneysyndicate.com. The Private Money Godfather is going to be here to help you to do everything you want to do as far as your dreams are concerned. What did we learn? Let's recap. All right. Number one is maintaining a strong personal credit profile is critical. I just said it. They use that for your car insurance, home insurance. You might not be able to get a job security clearance nor a loan if you got a bad credit score. So let's keep that thing up, not just when all of a sudden I need to use my credit, but let it be something like brushing your teeth and combing your hair and making up your bed in the morning. Let that be something that you manage and maintain. Uh, you control the factors impacting your credit. Now, I laid those five variables out. And there's not a one of them that you are not in control in, but knowing how to use them as tools and tactics is what I've shared information with you to help. Credit repair, you can do it yourself or you can pay somebody to do it. I think the biggest factor determining where you want to go with that one is how important is it for you to get it fixed quickly? Because if you do it yourself, it may take longer. You've got to be rigorous about it. But if you're like me, a lot of times I just want to get it done and I want to let a professional do it. You need to monitor your credit information because that is very important. And the last thing is review your credit report once a year. And in some states, you can do it twice. Do it as often as you can if you're not using a monitoring service. So I hope that you've learned some things that are helping you to look forward to improving your credit. It's been a great topic. In fact, today's topic was because somebody wanted me to talk about it. All right, so we encourage you to give us a call if you've got any ideas for future episodes at 706-888-3719 or email me at Tony at PrivateMoneyGodfather.com or you can go to our website, PrivateMoneySyndicate.com. And as we come to the end of another great episode, appreciate you staying tuned in. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. And as I always say, if you're going to go in business and stay in business, you've got to mind your business. Take care and we'll see you next time.